Right, it's your Geordie journals. Uh, what about that then, lads? Eh? Stamford Bridge, you know, a 2 1 defeat at Stamford Bridge could happen any year, really, but there seems like a little bit of a, a wider context to this one. A um, lot of social media discourse <coughs> at present, um, questioning Eddie Howe, questioning the changes he's made in games, questioning the personnel selected, uh, questioning the system. Does it suit the players that he's got? Question in the general direction, not only of the club, but the team itself on the pitch. Come to you first, Dom. What's your thoughts, firstly, on the game, and then secondly, on what you're hearing and seeing on social media? Because I think it's fair to say that this is probably the most uh, questioned, I think, Eddie Howe's probably been in his two and a half years at yeah. the football club. Yeah, I think that's, that's a fair assessment. On the game itself, Newcastle started terribly, I thought went behind or we thought they went behind got away with one with the VAR decision then did go behind poor and then got a bit of a foothold in the game but Chelsea always looked like they could take things up a gear and score a goal or make things happen and I think they would deserve winners in the end although there was probably one or two moments where you, Newcastle will look back and go we should have done better there we could have scored there Alexander Isak's chance being one of them but having spoke to Eddie Howe after the game I would echo a lot of what I'm seeing from fans on social media. I'm not seeing the same game Eddie Howe's seeing, I don't think. Yeah. Because Eddie Howe's saying that was a game between two good teams, really close fought. A lot of good things I saw from my team today, happy with the performance. None of those descriptions from Eddie Howe reflect what I personally saw from Newcastle United today. I thought they were... It was more of the same to a degree, but Chelsea, I thought, were far the better team. At times, the way they played, light years ahead of Newcastle, but their own lack of sort of cutting edge in front of goal and a couple of good saves from Nick Pope probably kept Newcastle in the game and then Newcastle wasteful at the other end. But yeah, I'm just not quite seeing what Eddie Howe's seen in his team at the moment and I think that's a big issue I'm, I think that's a fair comment that I've seen one good team who look like they really have an identity now a team who look really questionable defensively and will give you chances but also look like a team that want to suck another team on into the press and then break it immediately with strong runners whether that be full backs on either side Gusto uh, Rhys James or I thought Rhys James was, was excellent today really good physical strong player or whether that be from uh, somewhat in the forward areas with the constant movement and changes that they make. They're, they're a very uh, clever side. Um, I didn't say anything like that from Newcastle. I saw much of a muchness, very much the same sort of thing, like you said, that, that we've seen over and over. The persistence with a 4-3-3, the persistence with a half, half-baked press compared to what it was before, the persistence with the same sort of players, with the same sort of balance. There just needs to be a, there needs to be a change up. I, I think that's... That's kind of my thoughts. The, the whole place needs to freshen up. It feels like we've said this before. Kick up the backside. Kick the kick. Which I think we've done a video saying that probably six months ago. Yeah. They need another one. Yeah. Is there a better way of saying it? <laughs> well, for a headline for the video. <laughs> we can't do swears though, can no, we? No, probably not. No. We did do some swears in the lives that we've done recently, oh, well. but that was not. We'll keep that. We'll keep it PG for the big vid. <laughs> right, Jordan, your thoughts? Just, just predictable. That's the best way I can describe Newcastle at this moment. It's predictable. Coming here today and losing was predictable. The back four was predictable. The midfield three was predictable. The surprise was obviously their Harvey Barnes coming in family Gordon. Injury enforced. Alan Ron, who looked out the picture since the start of the season, has now been turned to by Eddie Howe because Jacob Murphy's out of form. So the only tweaks that are being made is like for like. And I would say... The, su the substitutes were the same as well, where in games previous, Sandro Tanali was the man coming on for Sean Longstaff, and now it's the other way around. Now it's the other way around, and yeah. so he's made the changes are being made, but it's just like for like it's it's the same. I I, I sort of agree with what you guys are saying. I, I feel that Newcastle have been in a, in a in a rut for a good while now. I would say this rut goes back to to last season but they found a way to finish the season strong if you like and get that seven players so I'm unlucky to miss out on Europe so that, that's why today there was if you break down the game you can probably see Newcastle competed alright 
the, the, the compete against Chelsea first 20 minutes was, it was poor I thought um, but they found an equaliser and were in the game so but I'm not basing my opinion on, on, on what I've seen today I'm basing over a number of games and what I've seen over a number of games is I don't like and it needs changed it needs a new energy about the place it's, it's up, ultimately it's on the manager to try and find that um, because this, this system this way of playing has been the same for two years two and a half years since, since Eddie Howe joined the football club really it's the same way of playing and I think teams have worked them out I think that's the problem I think teams have really worked them out um, Enzo Moresca today in his press uh, Enzo Moresca in his press conference mentioned about being a basketball game with Newcastle and if you give a basketball game to Newcastle they will cause problems teams aren't doing that anymore they're a, bit, a lot more resolute against Newcastle and Newcastle don't have ways to break teams down so uh, it's it's predictable and I would go as so far as say as well I think it's boring I think the way Newcastle have became out I think they're boring at this moment in time I would love to see a bit of energy about the place and it just isn't there at the moment and it's, it's only on the on the manager to, to do that outside of a transfer window because I think it goes back probably the recruitment as well um, Eddie Howe wasn't backed in the summer but to that end as well the lack of funds PSR or whatever Newcastle have themselves very well and that's also on Eddie Howe as well retaining players so it all comes back it's all linked it all comes back in one big circle and yeah Newcastle are just in a, in a very stale place and how that changes I, I'm, I'm not sure they could go and beat Chelsea in the, in the Carabao Cup they're going to beat Arsenal but I still have doubts over how Newcastle need to perform over a long term period. Yeah, I think that's really fair. The thing that really was, to me, was so inspiring about what we've seen in that, particularly that first full season at Newcastle United, and what brought a synergy between the fans and the players on the pitch was that the fans could almost, they, they really bought into the style, they bought into the hard running, they bought into the fitness, the the tackles, the, the chasing and winning the ball high, they bought into all of that. and. It's just, it's so, that that's totally divorced. That was a perfect marriage in many ways. Yeah. It was something fans could really be like, come on, get in, get stuck in. Whereas now, it's a total divorce. They're so far removed from anything like that. And, and I think that's what we're seeing between the fans now who are, who are to this point, I think have been really restrained and quite loath to be uh, reactionary and jump on the manager or jump on the players. I think they've been really restrained and respectful in that manner. But I think we're starting to see a little bit of a tipping point. I thought there was a little tipping point last season. You may agree, you may not agree. I thought that West Ham game, halfway through, and Newcastle went on to win 4-3. Yeah, when they were 3-1 down. When they were 3-1 down, I felt the crowd was ready to turn then. And I think anybody who was there, who knows it, uh, is revising history if they don't if they don't agree. Because they it was there, it was tangible. You could feel it, you could hear it. And the first murmurs that we're hearing since then were the criticisms from the fans there were only slight and small criticisms of the fans from uh, the Tonali substitution the yeah. Tonali substitution last time uh, when Newcastle played and again a day that was uh, I wouldn't say it was loud or vociferous so, but it was audible that they booed Tonali being taken off again and I think people are getting to the point where they're sick and tired of the same uh, recycled you said it before it's gone from 60 minutes long staff 30 minutes to gnarly to the other way around 60 minutes to gnarly 30 minutes long staff I think there's big question marks about lots of parts of this team I don't think Nick Pope's performing at the levels that he has done in the past I think he's looking slightly laboured in some of his movements I think he's, he's was very very poor for that second goal today I look at Tino Livramento in this game and I think there's huge defensive lessons that he needs to learn as a young player and he's having to learn it against the best teams at the highest level I think that's slightly problematic Lewis Hall for me was probably Newcastle's best player at Stamford Bridge against his old team put a great show in against his former Chargers however as excellent as he, I think he is he's also a player learning at the very highest level and still makes little errors where he tries too hard he's pushing for things to happen in defensive areas when he just needs to take the easy option sometimes that goes to the two centre halves as well two centre halves for me the first time really I think they've struggled at times this season but I thought that was the first time they've really looked their age I think both centre halves start to look aging and you can see why Newcastle was so determined to get somebody like a Mark Gay. I'm not saying Mark Gay's the man but a player who was very comfortable going up and playing a very high line and being able to get back and can yeah. recover and get back as well because those two were stuck between a rock and a hard place they didn't know they've had this all season they've now been told they've got to play a high line 
and it was so easy to break through. When you get any any centre forwards or clever forwards like Cole Palmer, they'll drop into pockets and spaces, or they'll spin you, or they'll go in behind, or they'll run past you like Neto. It was too many questions Newcastle did not have the answers to. That's a problem. They're missing a central defender who can do that. They've needed that for a long time. I remember saying to you guys when we didn't even do the Geordie Journals, Newcastle United in that first season of finishing the Champions League arguably had an aging, slow back four. They've, it, barely... they've not really done much to it, really. Yeah. Centre halves, two, two of the two centre halves. They definitely haven't improved, yeah. No, they haven't improved that. Um, going into the midfield, I don't think the midfield, the midfield three looks no more functioning than it did when Eddie Howe had to make changes to it at the start of last season. I don't think it's any more functioning. I think Tonali with Joe Linton and Bruno want to play in the same spaces, leave gaps behind them. They all have an attacking mindset. They all have very different skill sets, but it just isn't a functioning unit, in my opinion. And that comes down to the manager. Then I go into the front three. It was missing. It was missing. Look, we can't get away from this. It was missing Anthony Gordon. He's a massive miss to any team and he would beat any team in the Premier League. However, Harvey Barnes, and we know this, has been champing at the bit to get chances in this team. You're given an opportunity today to go and grasp and I think we've seen the limitations of Harvey Barnes. I don't think, I'm not sure any Cassini fans, they certainly didn't seem ready to have conversations about Sandro Tonali last week. I don't know if people are ready to have conversations about Harvey Barnes, but again, for a 40 million pound winger, I've not seen enough to suggest any Cassini should have put that money out on him. I've not seen a player who, as a winger, in a, in a system like this, a 4-3-3, for me, the wide players have got to be either the creative spark or they've got to be the end product. They've got to do one of those things. However, I find Harvey Barnes in open play, unless he's 20 yards out from goal and he was not clinical today, he had two opportunities to fire away shots and wasted both quite really poorly in the second half, one of them. He's, he's a, he stunts the progress of the team more than he actually adds to it. That's just my opinion. I, that's judging what I've seen this season. That doesn't mean I don't think he can't be a good player or we're maybe not seeing the best because the team isn't playing very well. So, you know, we're probably not seeing the best of these players. And that's probably fair as well. However, I'm not, I've not been impressed by Harvey Barnes this season. And even when, um, if he's knocking on the, saying he's knocking on the door to try and get the team, I don't think he's warranted it. And I said that last season. I didn't think even when he was fit and available, he was doing enough to make sure he had a place in the team. Alexander Isak, I think at the moment he's trying too hard. I think he's been more involved in the last two games than he has been ever. And you almost didn't want him to be involved today because he was the most influential player on that football pitch today for all the right and wrong reasons. Less right than wrong. There was a lot of wrong reasons why yeah. he, he, thought, he was the most influential. I thought he was partly at fault for both of Chelsea's goals. He was massively. Loose touches in the build-up to both of them. He couldn't really miss his goal. Good movement in the box. Good to see him end that sort of barren run he's had uh, to start the season but yeah you go back to that pass where we saw the still which I think stills look a lot worse than what they maybe are it's when it's split second yeah when it's in real time but you've got Joe Linton you've got Sean Longstaff goal gaping and he's it goes back to what you're, you're saying I think he's overthinking it and and trying too hard Alexander bit. Isak last season passes that ball to Joe Linton because he's already got goals in his bag. Or just gets he's a up, shot. Away. Yeah, it, it, I think he puts it in the net. Possibly, I. Yeah. There was another one in the, the right first decision. half as well where he got played in and he takes a touch and mis- messes up the cross. Last season, he just shoots. Yeah. You saw his goal at Stamford Bridge last season where you're like, he had a tiny sniff at goal, finds the bottom right yeah. hand corner. He, he's, he's just not doing that this it's season. It's a confidence it's, thing for me. Yeah. He's not become a bad player, he's still a good player. Um, it's the same for Anthony Gordon, the struggles that he's maybe had. The team isn't functioning, so they're not being shone in the best light. They're not, the wider picture isn't great. Um, sorry, I thought we were going to get chucked out there. We're not, we've been chucked out, out of Stamford Bridge. I thought we were going to get chucked out of the surrounds <laughs> there for a second. But no, I think, he's, I think he is trying too hard. And I think, I think this team in general is just looking weary. Um, but I feel like we're going over old ground. We've almost said yeah. this before. Yeah, we've caught, I think we've caught like this. Uh, what Jordan said, there's a bit of boringness to Newcastle bit of predictability almost like they're on autopilot it's like we're going to set up this way unless a change is forced in terms of the starting lineup it's going to be more or less this starting lineup and these subs are going to come at these times and we'll see how it happens I thought there was maybe a slight tweak after Newcastle were terrible the first five ten minutes 
slight tweak from Eddie Howe, he got the players over, spoke to them, but then the goal behind and after that they improved, but yeah, it was just a bit a bit predictable, a bit boring. And, and you go back all season, Newcastle scored for fun last season, even though they had the struggles. I mean, how many times have Newcastle actually looked a constant threat and scored goals against teams? I think I go back to Spurs and Wolves, the only time they scored more than one goal in a game. They've played yeah. AFC Wimbledon at home, scored one goal from a penalty in that game. They haven't actually taken games, grabbed games by the scruff of the neck and punished teams in the way they had previously. And maybe maybe I'm expecting too much, but I don't think it's... Of a team where Eddie Howe and Anthony Gordon came out this week and spoke about Champions League, European ambitions. A team that has European ambitions doesn't go 11 games into a season without really clicking in any of those games, I'd say. The 12th, the 12th in the Premier League. So anyone that may have for the a, a, a mind the phrase yeah but head in the sand the 12th in the Premier League that that, that is not good enough it's you're, you're nine games into the the league season but whatever you look at it that isn't a good start and that's not good enough to where Newcastle want to be yeah that's, that's the only thing I would say anyone that's that's where well, you look you're looking for positive in games you can if you want to you really take positives from that game today you can go well Alexander Isak give a goal away essentially and then missed missed one so you can base on that and go, that's why you didn't win a day. But I think, again, based off what I've seen covering this club, throughout Eddie Howe's time, it, it hasn't felt sustainable for a long time. Well, no, these conversations missed. last season. It's just, it's very much about uh, standards, isn't it? So there might be some people jump on the, that comment immediately and go, yeah, but look where you've been. Look where you could, look, you know, look what, what you've had it's in the really past. It's really unhealthy. But, but it, is, it is, you don't judge, we've said it numerous times on here, you don't judge uh, your future potential on where you've been, really. Like, if Newcastle continue to, to leave the bar at the level of Mike Ashley, they're never going to progress. This football club has left that in the dust. It does not want to be that football club. However, it's sitting in the same sort of position three years after the takeover by one of the richest uh, companies on the planet, effectively. And that's all a myth, anyway, as we've discussed on the Georgia Journals before. PSR limits them as to what they can do. And there's a lot of problems at Newcastle United. I don't think all is wrong. But I do really feel like, not only on the pitch but off it, there needs to be some kind of injection of energy. I think the football club as a whole is feeling it, it's suffering. I think the fans are suffering from that. I think the players are feeling it. The players it well. are feeling it. But that's the concern when Eddie Howe comes out and goes, we need to keep doing the We're same all thing. Right. We need to keep plugging away and we need to stick together. I get the stick together point, but the belief Eddie Howe is at least conveying to the media and to the public in that regard is, we're doing the right things. I think he actually said this word for word. We're doing the right things. We need to keep doing. They're not the other. But five games without a win in the Premier League is. You're not doing the right. Not doing the right things. Well, such. no. There's, there's there's eleven teams doing it better than you in the Premier League, and you would expect only four or five to be doing it better. But there's eleven. That shows something's gone seriously wrong. Things are going wrong at Newcastle. Brit, look, there's Brit. enough time to change it. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't. On on today's evidence and on last week's and the week before, I don't think there's a massive amount of evidence that they will change it They've, they're showing a little bit more focus and control in games in periods although it was chaos today there was no none of that sort of poison control that maybe you could say was a positive to come out of the poor results against Everton and Brighton mm. you're playing a better team today of course there is that away from home but there, was, there wasn't really much of that little moments little bits in the second half when it was palpable in the stadium that Chelsea have got a really haven't really got a very good home record. They haven't done very well here at Stamford Bridge, despite having a decent season. And it, you could feel it in the second half. It was very much like the Pochettino pressure last season yeah. when Newcastle released the valve for the opposition. With our own errors today, they released the valve for Chelsea and let them off the hook. That isn't a great Chelsea team that isn't performing great, but probably will be one of the better teams in the Premier League. So it's a really difficult one to judge in that respect. But I never felt like Newcastle United were in it. I never felt they were really going to beat Brighton last week. I never felt like they were going to beat Everton for all, everything they had, and that's the last three games against teams in a spectrum all over the all over the division to say where any casting there are, and I think they probably are where they deserve to be. And the way the way they're going now, you'd say a good season they'll finish where they finished last season. That would take a good season because of the teams that are around them and the teams who are performing to a much better level. And I go back to that thing, sorry, where you said worked out. I think they have been worked out. I think they were worked out by one team the first season, Aston Villa, then they were worked out by many more last, 
And this season, every single team in the Premier League knows how to play against Newcastle United. They're not going to allow them to do... They've become flat-track bullies. That's essentially what they are, aren't they? Mm. they? They'll do it at home when the conditions are fair, but give them a turn and pitch at Stamford Bridge. They can't do it. Yeah. Just, That's why we get the passes. He yeah. was there. Uh, so you guys are talking there, and I showed him my pass. He must have believed you still had a pass. Yeah, no. you're not. You haven't got a believable face, have you? <laughs> I was, but he, was, he gave us the thumbs up, and then he, he just, needed that one. He just wanted to be on. Just like he, him him on. he does, yeah. The security's view. Stafford Bridge security. Probably didn't see much of the game. But I think you raised a good point actually before the game, where we're talking about Newcastle. Okay, twelfth in the league, the nine games in. I think there's. Their run of fixtures gets harder from here. I think, relatively speaking, they've had quite a comfortable start to the season where you go, right, out of the, the big six, OK, you played Chelsea away, but then you played Spurs and Man City at home, and at home, you're always back Newcastle to, to at least have a chance of getting something. So this game here is probably Newcastle's most difficult game so far. Yeah. And the rest of the games they've played have all been... You, you'd back them to get a result from and the fact they're sitting 12th after what I would argue is a not an easy start because there's never easy games in the Premier League but it's a, fair though wasn't it a start that we certainly weren't complaining about compared to the one last season where it was definitely a difficult start but and they're in a better place mm. that just shows they've regressed they've not gone forward stood still I'm going to say this still. I'm really frustrated yeah I know I'm really <laughs> frustrated with what I'm seeing from them I'm really disappointed and frustrated. I, I've said from the beginning that Eddie Howe wasn't everybody's choice as manager. I think that's fair to say. That's not really trying to revise history. I think if any most people, Newcastle fans, were given a choice between the other candidates, I don't think Eddie Howe won any of those. It would have been the odd outlier that said, oh, well, actually, I fancy take a risk on Eddie Howe. So I think from that point, he's always had to keep proving he's the man. He's always had, as the club improved, he had to keep improving. We've hit stasis now. There is nothing moving, and they go. They're, and because they're not moving, and everyone else is, they're going backwards. The, he has to get the grips with this, and it is in his power to do it. He has got all of the tools and the power to put a team together for Wednesday and then Sunday to go and get two positive results. Do that. The, ref the reflection on the full season so far slightly changes and all that's because you say, right, you know, they'll not win the cup. We'll probably know that. I think that's fair to say, having not won a trophy since, oh. a domestic trophy since 1955. I mean, I'd love this to be clipped up. <laughs> I'd love, honestly, I I'd love it if you clipped this up in uh, in May or February <laughs> when the cups are handed out. Um, not me, I'm, I'm meant the FA Cup, not the, not the league, obviously, in May. Um, However, I just don't see it. Um, but it would look great, you know, getting through to a cup competition next round, last eight, um, and then putting a bit more parity on the, the league season and climbing up a couple of places in the division just to make it look a little bit more respectable. But this this isn't acceptable. Where they are, this is acceptable for everything that's gone before this takeover. But the standards set by Eddie Howe, set by his players, set by the owners of the football club, they will all know this is not acceptable. So that statement can't really be criticised. There has to be an improvement. Will we see it? I think we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Our last video for Shots TV we spoke about is Eddie Howe under pressure at Newcastle United. And that was seen, because fans voted, as quite a divisive statement. Yes. I think it's becoming less divisive. And when does being under pressure become something more than that? I think it'll be, uh, my, my opinion, I think, when we go to Forest, which I think we're due, we're due a defeat at Forest because the last three, off memory, the Isak penalty, the Bruno one-man show, yeah. uh, having been dominated largely, yeah. and the penalties win. I think Forrest would be knocking on the door to beat them. And, they're flying as well. And they're doing really well, so I think we're actually With two, two ex-Newcastle no, players no, at no, the heart of it. No, I'm not going there. <laughs> I don't want to either. <laughs> well, You're a big Chris Wood fan. I think they sold the wrong player. What? Oh, they didn't. They did. When well, you in hindsight, I was gonna at, the, say, at the time, I thought that selling Chris Wood was a good piece of business. There would have been outrage if Newcastle sold Callum Wilson instead of Chris Wood. Well, really, yeah, no, no, I'm just saying. They should have sold both. Mm. Hindsight's a That's wonderful. the thing. They should have sold both. Keeping hanging on to players who aren't good enough to play for the club, or underperforming in their positions, or aren't offering anything at all. The first one was unfair. The second two probably sum up Wood and Wilson. 
Um, they should be getting rid of them. They should be moving them on if there's players in this current squad that need to move them on. That's been the biggest problem of Eddie Howe and everyone involved at the football club is they've just not got rid of anybody. Mm. Chris Tom Woods nearly scored as many goals as Newcastle this season. Yeah. He has. Tom's tired to with Chris Wood. <laughs> it's, it's not good. I, look, I'm not, I'm, I think he's done brilliantly since he left, but... Uh, I, this is probably I, not a video to... No, I'll, <laughs> I'll go back on Chris Wood and it was not. It was not pretty at Newcastle, I don't think he he served a, a purpose and it he did the, it was the bare minimum, the purpose that he served. It was fill a hole where there was nobody else to play. That was the that was the hole that Chris Wood filled at Newcastle United. Let's not beat around the bush. He didn't score goals, didn't look like scoring goals. Now he does. No, I'm, I'm all happy for him. He was a good character. He, there was nothing wrong with it. it's not a personal thing, I just didn't rate him as a player in black and white. <laughs> That's an argument for another time, I think. Probably performed better than Alexander Isak this week. <laughs> yes, he, would have, he would have rounded the goalkeeper and scored because he would. Yeah, he probably would have. We took a couple more on. <laughs> <laughs> Passed yeah. to Ellie Anderson, who would have back it in. <laughs> Matt Sells. Up Matt Sells. Yeah, he would have. Like, yeah, he would have. We're just getting silly. Silly talk. Know, it's silly we talk. need to have a laugh at the end of it, ultimately, because it's been a long day, a disappointing day. So I just, I just hope there's a positive around the corner. but. I think based on what I've seen, I, I don't see how this gets better. I really don't. I think this is Newcastle now, up and down, up and down. The, honestly, I, would, I wouldn't bat against them going beating Chelsea and getting a result against Arsenal. I would not bat against them, but I, I don't think that, I think that makes the point. They're very, very inconsistent and they've been that, they've been that this calendar year. The paper's because all that cracks, I think. They get, up, they get up for the big games. Yeah, they do. They draw against City, beating Spurs at home. But it's it's too inconsistent, and that's my problem. When, when does the, when does the consistency come back? Based on what I've seen over the last since the turn of the year, I, I don't know. I think they're quite consistent. I think they're consistently mid-table the way they're performing. I think Perform- well, performances I would say are inconsistent. The yeah, they, they are consistently performing table, but yeah. performances have been out up and down because they can go and play against Man City and get a result. Yeah. They but any team, a lot of teams in the Premier League will think the same way though. That's a mid-table mentality. Oh, on our day we can give Man City a game. And it was meant to be better than that by now, wasn't it? And it isn't. Like I said, that, that game that we've seen um, could have happened in any season. And the perception would have been very different if it had happened five years ago. It would have been a good result. It would have been like, <laughs> done alright there. The difference yeah, yeah, it would, it would have. But are we re- is that where, really where we want to be? It's not where anybody at the football club wants to be. So as as fans out there, you guys have to be better than that as well. You can't be judging uh, the future success in Newcastle United on the past. It isn't the old Newcastle United and nobody wants it to be. So they need to make sure they don't slowly regress towards that, which is what they seem to be doing now. Right, so should I run through the T's and C's? Yeah. Like, comment, share, subscribe, you know what to do. Uh, click the bell if you like. If you do love all the Jordy Journal's videos and you want them straight to the device that you watch us on, might be a TV, your phone, wherever it is. There's also a thanks button down here somewhere. You can click thanks, and um, of course, we get donations. We put it into anything that, that we do. Sometimes we have to pay for little bits of away trips ourselves. Uh, we, we, we can't all get here on, on company's money. Sometimes we also have to uh, pay for little bits of equipment like this amazing mic up here. Well, that, Hopefully. Oh. I think that would that be definitely everyone. Hello, <laughs> anybody with earphones, and I'm really sorry about that. And the lovely light that we had that Jordan didn't charge. So, well, <laughs> I did charge it. Him under the it is, I did charge it. I had nothing. To so charge. luckily, we're under we're under this amazing spotlight here mm. outside Stamford Bridge. And I hope there was nobody with epilepsy in the video because that was flashing a lot over my shoulder. That that video that was going well, on. I, up did, there. I did say. Uh, yeah. But anyway, it's one of them. It is. Four Rivers Financial Planning. Yes. No, he's back. Oh, it's on. No, it's, 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 is it going to die? No, it's going to die. Oh, so. what a shame. <laughs> right. Uh, Four Rivers Financial Planning. For all your uh, holistic pension and finance advice, do check those guys out. Um, if you haven't checked out our previous videos, we've done lots of lives recently. The live went down really well this week. Uh, did one with Keith Patterson as well, so check that one out. Might well be another live this week. We'll see if we can get around to it, but there are a lot of uh, games and yeah. things like that this week so it might press conference, yeah. press conference Tuesday game Wednesday press conference Friday game Saturday so it's going to be a busy week on the Geordie Journal so do keep your eyes out for everything that we do produce we've done half an hour from Stamford Bridge we'll try and get this over as quick as possible but thank you everybody anything left to say say it now oh, let's, let's go nothing to say let's go right 
good night from the Geordie Journals. We're heading back up. You're having another night in London because um, you're on your holly bobs. Aye. Good luck to Jordan in the presser videos, then. Oh, you're alone because I'm on my holly bobs as well. Ah, oh, fair enough. Oh, fair enough. I, rel man. I relish the one man battles. If there's, any, <laughs> if there's any Jordan lovers out there, please do tune in because Tuesday he's the man. I might try and join you if I can. I probably could. <laughs> if the viewers not at the press conference, if the viewers don't probably... want me to do a video by myself, <laughs> let us know. We could meet up somewhere. We'll if we wanted to do. You know what? We might just do a video. Well, no, who knows? You never know what's going to come with the Jordy journals. We'll always keep you guessing. <laughs> it's the roll of the dice. But you do know you will definitely get four videos from us this week. So do stay tuned. Right, like, comment, share, subscribe. We're off home. Good night from the Jordy journals.